there. Welcome to Walnut Hill Online and happy Easter. I am so glad that you are here to worship and celebrate with us today. You know, I would love to give a special hello to our friends out there at Liberation House. I am so glad that you were a part of our Walnut Hill family. And for the rest of you who are part of the family, go ahead and connect into our community today. Jump into a chat, say hello to a host. We would love to greet you and get to know you. And if you're new today, if you've received an invite from somebody really awesome, I would love to beat you. Go ahead and visit walnuthillonline.org slash new and fill out that connect card so that I can meet you and greet you, send you a small welcome gift, learn how I can serve you and maybe connect you into the life of the church and also how I can pray for you. I would so love to pray with and for whatever concerns you might have. Also part of our community are your kids. We would love to help them grow in faith and learn about Jesus today. We have Christ-centered lessons just for your kids, just for where they are at. Visit walnuthillonline.org slash kids and you'll you'll gain access to those lessons so that you, they can grow in faith and learn about Jesus today, just as you will during service. Also part of our community is prayer. We believe in the power of prayer here at Walnut Hill Online. If you visit walnuthillcc.online.church and click request prayer, you'll gain access to a prayer servant who would love to pray with and for whatever concerns or anxieties are on your heart today. And we would also love to celebrate with you. If you have a good report, we would love to thank the Lord with you today. Again, that's walnuthillcc.online.church and click request prayer so we can pray with and for whatever is on your heart heart and mind today. You know, we are here this Resurrection Sunday, this Easter Sunday to celebrate the goodness of God and his power over death and the grave and how we have been set free. So I want to make sure that right now you're going ahead and clearing out your space so that you have that distraction free area so you can worship freely and hear from the Lord. And as you do that, let me encourage you with a reading from Psalm chapter 118. And the Bible says, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the ones who come in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. So let's celebrate together the day that Jesus made it possible for all of us to be restored to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We owe him our highest praise, our greatest praise, our biggest praise, our most exuberant praise for all that he has done for us. So right now, let's pray to dedicate our hearts and our minds for worship today. Oh, dear Jesus, we thank you. We say hallelujah, yes, and amen to all that you've done. We pray that today you would be pleased with our praise. We pray that today that we would be transformed in your presence, that our hearts will be filled with joy in your presence, that we would come to a greater understanding, a greater knowledge of who you are because of your sacrifice. And I pray, Lord, that we will be filled to overflowing with your spirit so that we can go out and share the goodness and the love and the mercy and the kindness and faithfulness of who you are to a world that needs you so desperately. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, welcome again to Walnut Hill Online. Let's worship together.
Peter. Zurich. name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him lord of all bring forth the Lift him up this morning, church. And all hail King Jesus. All hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail King Jesus. He is risen. All hail. And we are here with hearts filled with praise to worship Jesus. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready to celebrate Him, to lift Him high, and to thank Him. Yeah? Come on, church. We got a Jesus who is risen. So we are going to worship Him today. All right, here we go. Place to hide his very soul, his backbones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, oh, I can fall. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man. And he told me that I was not alone He picked me up, turned me around Placed my feet on the solid ground I thank the Master, I thank the Savior Because He healed my heart, He changed my name Forever free, I'm not 
my doubts are burning Like ashes in the rain So long to my old friends Burdens and bitterness You can't just keep it moving And I welcome you From now till I walk the street and go I'll sing of how you save my soul This wayward one has found his way back here because I know it's Easter Sunday morning and I think we have a lot to be thankful for and so I want us to actually shout it out come on what are you thankful for this morning yeah his love his faithfulness what else yes his presence restoration what else yes oh such amazing grace right what else come on church what are we thankful for today Yes, freedom in Jesus. Amen. It's so good. God is with us. His presence is with us. He says he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he made his love known to us on a cross. Oh, we have so much to praise him for today. So let's lift our voices as we continue to bless him.
guess my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds he sends his feet my Savior on the curse of tree his body bound and drenched in they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance seen by heavy stone, Messiah still, and all My name is Adam DePasquale. I serve as one of the lead pastors here. Hey, if you're visiting or you're new today, we just want to extend a warm welcome to you. We're so happy that you could be with us today celebrating our risen Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, this past week, we've been journeying through this Holy Week and reflecting on all the events that have led to today. 
I think about Good Friday and how we reflected on really the suffering that Jesus went through. We imagined the confusion that the disciples would have had, that we would have had. But today, the tomb is empty. And we celebrate the risen Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, I want to read to you from the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Um, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Philippi. And uh, many historians believe that Paul would have been in prison at this point in Rome. He would have been in his later years. This is a man who came to know Jesus around 30 years old, right? So he'd already lived a good part of his life. And he encountered Jesus on a road, and it changed his life. And then for the rest of his life, he went and he preached the good news from city to city. And now he's at the end of his life, and he's like reflecting, right? And he's writing to a church that he loves about Jesus. Listen to this. It says, And being found in appearance as a man, Jesus humbles himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. In heaven, I like to think of that moment he was picturing the angels kneeling or the saints that have gone before us kneeling. It says, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So today we celebrate this risen Savior, the one who's been exalted above all. We have so much to be thankful for, don't we? So today as we worship, let's remember that we're celebrating the risen one, the one who is above all names. Let's turn our attention to the screens as we consider what we're thankful for today. Thank you, Jesus, for always meeting me in my brokenness and in my mess. Thank you, Jesus, for turning my fear into courage. Thank you, Jesus, for being a protector, protecting me through the hardships and struggles and through the good times as well. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing yourself to my daughter, Eva. When she was paralyzed by fear, you revealed yourself to her, replacing her fear with confidence, so much so that she walked into what she was afraid of the dark, carrying the light that you gave her and sought out someone else who might be also frozen by fear. Thank you, Jesus, for freeing me from addiction and always being my comfort through the hard times. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. And in your love, you gave me a wife of 52 years. Thank you, Jesus, for challenging me, showing me my worth, and teaching me what faith looks like in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for always giving me hope and never leaving me alone. Thank you, Jesus, for being my good shepherd and comforter. She's forever changed. Only you could do that because you are the light in the dark place. I'll never forget it. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me and showing me how to love others. There's nothing impossible for you. No problem too big, no situation too complex that you can't handle. I can't imagine life without you. And you give me the strength each day. Thank you, Jesus, for my family. Thank you, Jesus, for the way you provide. Jesus lives. 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 was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the breach was far too wide from the far side of the chasm you had me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross 
You paid the debt I owed Broke my chains, freed my soul For the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of fire Thank you, Jesus, it has won Of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for the God some glory today. Let's praise him today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So church, let's remain standing for our scripture reading this weekend, which is Matthew 28, 1 through 10. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. 
His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was laid in. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Happy Easter, everybody. Nice. All right. That was fantastic. I want to greet our friends online today. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm one of the lead pastors here at, at Walnut Hill Community Church. And this is just a wonderful morning, isn't it? A wonderful morning to come and worship and exalt our King of Kings, our Jesus who is alive. I want to do something with you just some, for some engagement here, okay? I'm gonna yell out, he is risen. I'd love for you to yell back, he is risen indeed, okay? I'm gonna do this three times. If you've been here for the last 16 years, I've done it for 16 years, okay? So I think you've caught on by now. If you're new, you'll catch on real fast. But I would expect that it will get louder with each time that I do it, okay? And I'm expecting that because that's been the case for 16 years now, okay? So, um, but sometimes it's good to, to speak out the truth. This isn't just a tradition, a ritual. This is us proclaiming the truth. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Okay? So here we go. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen All right. Let our online people hear us. Okay, ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise God. That's the truth. That's the truth. He's risen indeed. He's risen. I want to tell you the story, which you just heard through our scripture reading, of some women who went to a tomb, a very famous tomb. You know, people all across the globe go and visit tombs to this day. Millions and millions of people visit the pyramids in Egypt where the Egyptian kings lay. Millions of people go to Westminster Abbey. Millions of people go to the Prophet's Mosque where the Islamic uh, prophet Muhammad lies there. Millions of people go to the Faman Temple where Buddha is supposedly there lying in that tomb. Many people go and visit tombs probably and mainly because of what they contain. But for Christ followers, we celebrate a tomb that's far more famous than any of these tombs. And it's not because of what that tomb contains. It's because of what that tomb is missing. There is no body there. It is gone because he is risen. He is risen indeed. The angel in Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10, has great words for these women that come to the tomb. And I want to share three instructions with you that the angel gives to these women. And I believe they're instructions for us today. The word of God is active, it's living, it's breathing. Uh, we can apply it to our lives. And so as we hear these words from the angel, I want us to apply them to our, to our own life. 
These women approach the, the tomb, and there are some guards who are lying on the ground who have fainted. Maybe this is a little bit like a scene in a hospital room when the mother is giving birth and the male is on the ground, <laughs> fainted in fear. And the women come to the tomb, and these are the first, the first instruction from the angel is this, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So easy for the angel to say, right? Don't be afraid. You know, the worst thing you could say to somebody who is afraid, don't be afraid. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a great idea. I won't be afraid any longer. Don't be afraid. But I believe that the Lord wants us to hear those words today too. Don't be afraid. Listen, I know that there, there's a lot in this world. There's a lot of brokenness. There's a lot of hardship right now. But I want to give you a word. Don't, don't be afraid. And here's what I believe that the angel was saying to the women, Mary and the other Mary who come to the tomb. I believe the angel in this don't be afraid was actually saying this. I see you. You know, it's really good to know that we're seen. Seen by God. And the angel wanted those women to know, I see you. I see your fear, I see your hurt, I see your, your brokenness, I see your worry, I see the circumstance that you're in and the things that you're facing, I see you, I see you. I believe the Lord wants you to know this Easter that he sees you. He sees the things you're facing, he sees the fears that, that, that have kind of gripped you, he sees your situation, he sees the brokenness around you, he sees you. Don't be afraid. But then I, I think the angel said these words because he knew the news he was carrying. Don't be afraid. I see you. I see your circumstance that, that you're, you're hopeless because this Jesus who professed to be the Messiah is, is in a tomb. He's been buried. He's, he's crucified. He's died. And I'm sure you feel hopeless in this moment, but don't be afraid. And the only reason I can say don't be afraid is because I've got some great news for you. Have you ever had a day that was horrible? Yes. A few of us? Yes. But then it was followed by a day that was amazing. And then in that amazing day, you kind of look back going, why was yesterday so bad? And all of a sudden, that great day, that great news drowns out and overshadows the bad news of the day before it. And the angels knew, listen, I know Saturday was tough. I know you were hopeless, you were wondering what was gonna happen. Your savior, your Messiah was dead in a tomb, but I've got some news that's gonna drown out and overshadow Saturday. And this is what the angel says, here's the good news. I, I know you, you've come looking for Jesus. What a great statement. I know that you've been walking with this Jesus. He was real, he lived, he walked this planet. I know you came looking for this Jesus who you loved, who you served, who you wept with, who you celebrated with, who you partied with. I know this Jesus. I know you're looking for him. He was crucified. I know also that he was put to death. He was absolutely dead. He was buried. But guess what? He's not here. He was here. <laughs> he was in this very tomb, but he's no longer here. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen from the dead. Just like he told you he was going to do. Don't you remember he told the disciples, he told all of his followers several times, I'm going to die. I'm gonna be buried. I'm, I'm gonna be hurt and, and, and suffer at the hands of the religious elite. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna be buried, but then, Three days later, I'm gonna rise from the dead. Well, guess what? It's the third day, and he is not here. Which tells all of us in this moment that any promise Jesus has given, we can trust. That any word that he's given to us, we can trust it. That he is the way, the truth, and the life. That he is and has gone to prepare a place for us that he is divine, that if we remain in him, he will remain in us. That our sins are forgiven because of what he has done on the cross. We can trust his promises. Don't be afraid. I know this world has trouble, but we have a Jesus who has overcome death. We have a Jesus who has victory over the evil one, and he's told us he's coming again. 
Take hope in that. Take heart in that. We can have hope in Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid. And then, I love what the angel says next. The second word of instruction is this. Come, see where he was lying. Come and see. Come and see. This is the invitation of Jesus for you today. Come and see. I love how the angel said, hey, listen, I know you came all this way. Ladies, here you are. And I'm telling you that Jesus rose from the dead just like he said, but don't just take my word for it. Step into the tomb in, in, in just whatever belief you have and whatever faith, whether it's small or large, take those steps and see it yourself. Come and experience it yourself. Don't just read the, pa- the, the words on the page. Don't just take my word for it. Get on in there. Take a look and see if you see him there. And experience the fact, the truth, the reality that Jesus is alive. Do you know, we're not here to celebrate a religion. We're here to celebrate a relationship that we have with Jesus. That's what I want. I don't want a religion. Who wants a religion? I want a relationship with God. And we have it in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he is alive. Come and see. Throughout John's gospel, you see those words. Come and see. Come and see. Some of John's disciples were looking at Jesus in John chapter 1, and they were like, wow, who is this guy? I wonder what it's like to be around him. And Jesus turns to those disciples and says, Come and see. Walk with me throughout the day. Come and, come and see what it's like to, to be with me. Let me speak to you. Let me eat with you. Let me encounter you. Come, come and see. Later on in John chapter one, Andrew, who had been with Jesus that whole day, now goes and finds his brother, Simon Peter, and says, hey, listen, guess what? I went, I saw, but now you need to come and see this Jesus too. Jesus encounters a Samaritan woman at a well in John chapter four, changes her life, tells her all about herself. (laughs) She's amazed by this. At the end of the encounter, she runs off. She goes and she tells her whole community. She says, come and see a man who knew everything about me. Come and see, I I think he's the Messiah. I've seen him, I've spoke to him, but don't just take my word for it. You've gotta come and see him too. So here's my challenge for you, friends. See, sometimes I think we reject Jesus before we ever meet him. I wanna challenge you with whatever faith you have in this story, in this Jesus, whatever faith, whether it's small like a mustard seed or whether it's large, whatever faith you might have, I I wanna challenge you to step out in faith and come and see the risen Lord Jesus Christ. How do you do that? Open his word. Allow him to speak to you. Go to prayer. Ask him to to speak to you. Uh, Pray. Ask him for the things that you you need. Praise him. Come and worship with us on Sundays. Experience his great love for you. Be taught by his word. Seek him. Seek him. The word tells us if you seek him, you will find him. I want to challenge you this Easter not just to go away and have this a check mark of your yearly kind of commitment. I want this to be a moment where you say, you know what? I heard the invitation to come and see. I'm going to check it out for myself. I'm not going to take that guy with a really cool jacket on's word for it. (laughs) I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come and see for myself. And here's what I can tell you. My personal story is I stepped out in faith because I wanted to see if this Jesus was real, and I experienced that he's real every single day of my life, every day of my life. He speaks to me, he calls me to hard things, but when I step out in faith, he meets me there. Come and see. Third instruction, I love this. The the angel doesn't allow the women to sit in that moment for too long in the tomb checking it out. Wow, he's not here, wow, he's not here. He says, hey, go quickly and tell. You've seen it, now go and tell. Don't just kind of wait and hover around here. This isn't just for you. You got to get this news out there. A couple things that are remarkable to me in this moment. I wonder when the angel tells these women, go and tell, I want you to go and and tell the story of Jesus' resurrection. I want you to go and carry the most important news that has ever hit this planet. 
I wonder if the women in this moment were stunned that they were chosen. I bet they were. You know, in that time in history, a woman's testimony wasn't even valid in court. They weren't to speak in the synagogue and the temple. They didn't have an authoritative voice even in the home. And now all of a sudden, the Lord is sending an angel. An angel of the Lord comes and tags these women to go and share the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm choosing you. It was almost like God was kind of identifying the world might not trust you with this story, with this great news, but I trust you. Go quickly and tell. Here's what I want to say to you in that. Maybe you don't feel equipped. Maybe you wouldn't pick yourself. (laughs) Maybe you don't feel like you're the one who can really go out and make a difference for Jesus. I just want to turn the tables on that, friends. If God has given you a story, has God changed any of your lives? Has Jesus transformed you? Has he spoken to you? Has Jesus healed any of you? Has, Has Jesus healed any of the broken places within you? Has Jesus transformed who you are? Are you a new creation? If that's the case, then go quickly and tell your story. Go and tell the world. Go and tell those who are close to you all about what Jesus has done. And I love how they carry this promise that the angel of the Lord tells these women, listen, as you go, and as you go quickly, here's what's gonna happen. Tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And here's the promise that the angel gives these women. And you will see him there. It's in our going. It's in our obedience. It's in our listening to the Lord that we get to see him. God's not gonna show up for the couch potato. (laughs) He's gonna show up for those who radically obey him. And you're gonna see him there. And I love what happens next. This is the response of the women and my challenge, my hope for each one of us this Easter is that we would do the same. It simply says this in scripture, in verse nine, as they went, as they went. They could have returned home, they could have done something else, but as they went, here's what happened as they went, as they obeyed these instructions, Jesus met them and greeted them. My prayer this Easter for you and this upcoming year is that you would take it very seriously to come and see Jesus Christ that he might encounter you in unbelievable ways, that you would know the real presence of Jesus in your life, and that you would go and tell your story, that you would get into motion in your faith, and that as you do that, Jesus would meet you along the way. And here's why I believe this so strongly, is because we serve a God who is alive. We don't serve a God who's just waiting for us in heaven. We serve a God who is present with us right now, who speaks speaks to us, who guides us and directs us. May you know this living Jesus in your life. Right now, we're gonna do some baptisms. We're excited for that. We love baptisms. And um, we did three baptisms last night. Today, at this service, I believe there are 13. At the 11, there are another 15 people getting baptized. And here's what this is. Here's what this is. These are folks, these are friends of ours who have already given their life to Jesus. Jesus has already done a great work in them and now they're coming publicly before you and some of them are a little bit nervous about that. So look friendly, okay? I mean, you got, you're looking good but look friendly to them, okay? And, and they wanna publicly say, Jesus has transformed my life and I wanna make him the Lord of my life and I'm gonna follow him the rest of my life. And this is a, a great celebration Because as they go under the water, it's a symbol of dying to their old life. Coming out of the water, it's being refreshed and washed clean by the blood of Jesus and entering into a a new life. It's a symbol of what Jesus has done for them. And here at Walnut Hill, what we do is as they come out of the water, we're gonna be worshiping together, the band's gonna be playing. As they come out of the water, we cheer. Like, we cheer real loud, okay? Like, for real, we cheer, okay? Because we're so excited about what God has done in their lives. If you're a parent or a friend and you wanna get close when they're baptized to take some photos, please feel free to do that. But they're gonna come now and they're gonna share their testimony with you and then we're gonna go into the baptismal 
for baptism. So listen closely to these great stories of Jesus' transformation. Yeah, go all the way down here, Benny. I want to be baptized this Easter because I want to show everyone here that I'm a follower of Jesus. Jesus has changed my life by forgiving my sins, and I hope my baptism encourages others to follow Jesus too. Two years ago, I was partaking in prayer during a Sunday morning service in the 56ers room. During that moment, I surrendered my life to Jesus, and I felt a sudden rate wave of calm wash over me. It felt like the Holy Spirit was talking to me. Right then, I sensed that this was the time to pour out my heart to Jesus. This is why I want to be baptized today. The night I gave my life to Jesus, I stepped outside and was shocked to see a big golden moon. I was so thrilled that when I realized it was a sign from God that he heard my prayer. I knew my next step was to get baptized and let the world know that I belong to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to get baptized on this special day. I want to be baptized because I'm ready for God to take over my life fully. I know that he has a plan for me and will lead me in the right direction. He will also tell me what is right and what is wrong. Another reason I want to be baptized is because I know he will protect me and love me no matter what. And when I'm going through something, he will help. I was in a place in my life where I was making some very poor decisions, and I did not like the person I was becoming. I kept praying to God, asking for strength and for him to help me. I kept hearing snippets from Pastor Clive on the radio about Walnut Hill, so I decided to give it a try. Since then, I have accepted Jesus as my Savior, and I look forward to the next steps of living a life close to God. I want to be baptized because before I knew Jesus, I was alone and always filled with fear and worry. Today, being surrounded by Jesus' love, which I found here at Walnut Hill, there is no fear and there is no worry. He's always there for me. He chose me and he died for me, and I'm so grateful. I am getting baptized today to declare my faith in God and love for Jesus Christ. Not long ago, I was lost, but like the good shepherd he is, God left the 99 to find me. I'm honored to be baptized in the Holy Spirit today to wash away the sins of my past and surrender all to our almighty and faithful God. Today, I am reborn to a new life in Christ. Today, I rejoice in being a child of God and take courage in knowing the, lo the Lord loves to see the work begin. I wanna be baptized because I want the world to know that I love Jesus and he is my best friend. It wasn't until recently when I became part of a crew, started doing quiet times, and began talking about my faith with my friends that I started experiencing this new journey with God. I realize now that Jesus is less what I believe in and more about how he is a part of my daily life. I want to be baptized because I feel that the word of God has spoken to me through the service I conduct. As service has been a big part of my life. I have met many people and gained many connections. As I continue on the journey that God has sent me on, I know that each and every person I meet is meant to be in my life. I want to be baptized because the Lord has always listened and directed me in my life. I surrendered my life to him as a youth, and today I want to show him my gratitude and appreciation and have a deeper relationship with him. I want to be baptized because Jesus gives me rest and peace. My heart is yours, Lord, and my life is in your hands. I give it all to you, Lord Jesus. Knowing your grace and love for me sets me free to be the child of God I was created to be. Knowing the love of Jesus has opened my world up to view the blessings we all have when we choose to know him. My relationship with Jesus is my greatest gift.
I want to be baptized because I am choosing to follow our Lord in his teaching and ways. I am ready to accept his love and compassion. Through the people at Walnut Hill Community Church, I've learned that the Lord is always by my side, even during my most challenging moments. I want to be baptized because Jesus has saved my life in every sense of the word and has filled my emptiness, filled the emptiness in my heart. I have submitted my obedience to Jesus as my Lord and Savior. All right, church, let's stand to our feet as we celebrate with our brothers and sisters who are being baptized today. Let's worship him and let's celebrate this great act of baptism. Came from glory, took on flesh to save the lost, grace and mercy is laid upon the cross. Our redemption is hope for all mankind, one name over every day, one name over every day. Jesus, oh.
I've searched the world But it couldn't fill me Bands empty breaks Treasures of faith Never enough Oh, then you came along And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain He's the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find it again Nothing is better
so much for joining us for our Easter celebration today. It was so good to worship with you today. If you were new or you were here for the first or second or just have been here kind of recently, we would so love to get to know who you are. Visit walnuthillonline.org slash new and fill out that connect card so I get a chance to meet you and greet you and send you a small welcome gift. And if you are new, I would love to see you here again with us at Walnut Hill Online. We have services every Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. We would so love to connect with you and have you be a part of our family here at Walnut Hill Online. So as you go into your week, I would so love for you to continue to engage in the joy of having a risen Savior. Read another Easter plan. Why? Because Jesus is still alive. And we don't just celebrate Jesus as being alive on Easter Sunday. We celebrate it every day. And I believe that if you continue to engage in the Easter story, read an Easter plan, read about the Easter story in the Gospels, maybe even connect in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that details what it means that Jesus died for us. What does it mean for us as Christ's followers? I would so love for you to do this so that you continue to be connected to the Easter story and really understand all that Jesus has done for us. It will fill your heart with joy, I guarantee it. So be sure to connect with the Lord in that way this week. We do have prayer servants who are still available. They would love to pray for you, whatever concerns you might have. Visit walnuthillcc.online.church and click request prayer so they can connect with you in a private one-on-one -on -one chat area. It's an opportunity for you to share what's on your heart and for them to pray with and for you. We would love to do this. Why? Because we are family here at Walnut Hill Online. So as you go into your week, let me bless you. 
I pray that this week you would continue to con celebrate our risen Savior, King Jesus. Don't stop celebrating. Don't let the joy of this moment just dissipate after you walk out of here today. I would love for you to carry that joy in your heart as you go into your week. And I pray that you would be filled to overflowing with the joy of knowing that we serve a risen Savior who has restored us, who frees us, who heals us, who allows us to be in relationship with Him. I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, happy Easter again. God bless you. I love you so much. I'll see you real soon.